The FIFA World Cup is a monumentous event that occurs every four years. Teams from all over the world come to play in the biggest tournament the game has to offer. But it's crazy to think, in this day and age, that once upon a time, the World Cup didn't exist. Previously, the only international competitions had been played in the Olympics and described as the World Football Championship for amateurs. But at the same time as the Great Depression and the same year as we discovered Pluto, something great was born. In the South American country of Uruguay, specifically in the capital of Montevideo, across three different stadiums, including the very impressive Estadio Centario, which during this great happening recorded its record attendance of 80,000, which still stands to this day. Uruguay hosted the 1930 World Cup, the first ever World Cup. Only 13 teams entered the competition, seven from South America, four from Europe, and two from North America. The lack of European teams entering was due to a difficulty that came with travelling to South America at the time. One of the participants of the 1930 World Cup was the French national team, who as we all know currently hold the World Cup. But it is the man who captained this team that interests us. The man to me, who was the most evil to ever grace the game. Born in 1905 in Algiers, the then capital of French Algeria, an ex-French territory established in 1830 and abolished in 1963, a man known as Alexandre Villaplane was born. This man is the subject of our video. FC Sete gave the first chance to the 16-year-old Alexandre to play the beautiful game before moving on to Nimes. It was at his next club, Racing Paris, in 1930. At the age of 25, he was chosen to captain the French national team in Uruguay. Villaplane captained all three of France's games at the tournament, but France went out after losing to both Argentina and Chile. They did, however, record their first ever World Cup win against Mexico in a 4-1 victory. A disappointing result in comparison to the current French team, but for Villa playing, he was already creating history. The first ever man to captain France at a World Cup. Handsome and talented, the future was bright for Villa playing, but onwards from the World Cup, his true character started to show. The French Professional Championship was created in the 1932-1933 to season, and today is known as Liga 1. The way it worked back then was the north and the south of the country played in different leagues, then the two top teams would play in the final. Now Villa playing played football at the time for FC Antibes, who won not only their respective league, but the final against SC5 Lille, predecessors of today's Lille Olympic Sporting Club. But in turn it was discovered that the match was fixed, and Antibes was stripped of their championship, and the manager dismissed permanently. It's widely suspected behind this was the man Villa playing. For not long after, the club released him. This was the start of the downward spiral that became Villa Plain's story. From here on out, Villa Plain would play for Nice, but spend most of his time being fined for either skipping training or becoming a regular down at the racetrack. He was soon released and ended up finishing his career at Hispano Bastidien, a team in Bordeaux at the age of 30. This was down to Villa Plain ended up in jail for his involvement in a horse racing scandal. Now is when the story really gets dark. In 1939, Germany invades Poland, and the Battle of Westerplatte occurs. The United Kingdom offers Germany an ultimatum, which is in turn ignored, and thus starts World War II. Now, the World War was not a pleasant event for the residents of France, but it did give an opening for a man of such hobbies to start creating his riches. Now, we're going to have to do a sidestep here and discuss a different man very briefly. This man is known as Henri Lafont, and he's a successful French criminal who became the head of the French Gestapo. He proved his worth to the Nazis via the hunting and torturing of the head of the Belgian resistance. This allowed him, a French national, to continue making his money through crimes such as racketeering of Jewish French nationals, an activity in which Villaplane was involved in. Villaplane originally started off as a chauffeur, a long fall from being the French captain, but quickly made his way up the ranks of the French Gestapo. He went from his original smaller crimes, fixing football games, to being the head of the BNA, the Brigade Nord Afrikaan. Villaplane was a First Lieutenant SS officer. A traitor to his own country, he once represented at the world's biggest stage for the first time in their history. The man now didn't wear a French kit. He had the SS uniform as his. Villaplane was given the command of a unit with the objective of finding members of the French resistance and their followers. It was during this period he went on to command the execution of 52 people and was directly involved in 10 murders. In 1930, Villaplane captained France to a 4-1 victory over Mexico. In 1944, he is shot dead by a firing squad. 
They pillaged, raped, robbed, killed, and teamed up with Germans for even the worst outrages, the most awful executions, said the prosecutor at Villa Plain's trial after Paris had been liberated. They left fire and ruin in their wake. A witness told us he saw with his own eyes these mercenaries take jewels from the still, twitching and bloodstained bodies of their victims. Villa Plain was in the midst of all this, calm and smiling.